Shabbat Shalom. As you heard from our Bat Mitzvah, one of the important components of becoming B'nai Mitzvah is this idea of a mitzvah project. Right? It's not just being called to the Torah, it's the idea that you're taking responsibility for others. Is that you understand that you now have this chiv, this responsibility for yourself and your own actions, but we also have a responsibility for the world and see ourselves as God's partners in this world. In fact, when the Talmud asks, what does it mean that we walk alongside God? The rabbis answer Masechet Sota that just as God took care of the most vulnerable, so too it is our obligation. Just as God clothed the naked, clothed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, we are to take care of those who are vulnerable. Just as God visited uh, Abraham when he was ill in the terebinths of Mamre, we are to visit the sick. Just as God buried Moses, we are to uh, kavod hamates, provide for those and honor them when they leave this world. What does it mean to be God's partner? It means to take care of those who are in need. And our Parsha, as our Bat Mitzvah told us, how we cannot discriminate against anybody, our Parsha goes deeper into that. In Parshat Bahar, we're told, that if your neighbor, right, if your kinsfolk, if somebody who you should see as your own, like you, is in straits, financial straits or otherwise, and it says specifically, that it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter if they look like you, it doesn't matter if they love like you, it doesn't matter if they pray like you, it doesn't matter if they are, the Torah literally says, a citizen who was born in this country or an immigrant, that it's our responsibility to not turn our back on those who are our neighbors when they are in need. It's not talking about raising money for a third world country and there's such discrepancy, discrimination in this world among the haves and the have-nots, that that's equally important work. But what it's saying is that we can't build up barriers in our own communities between the haves and the have-nots, between those who have blessings and those who seek to have the same blessings that we're supposed to celebrate living in a diverse community by taking care of those, including a financially diverse community, by taking care of those, especially when they're in financial straits. The Torah is saying, how do you take care of those who are in need? How do you walk in God's ways by taking care of the most vulnerable? By giving tzedakah. I think about... Uh, I see many who spend many, many days here, including Shana, the dedicated work of the Interfaith Food Pantry. Houses of worship across faiths who come together to provide for our neighbors who are food insecure, who live in areas that are considered a food desert to help those so that they can continue to be our neighbors, so that we continue to build community and live in community together. And it's that act of tzedakah, that act that is an essential part of what does it mean to be a bat mitzvah, of taking responsibility for this world, that arguably is the most important part of our lives. In fact, there's a parable in the Talmud Masechet Bava Batra, where we're told that there are 10 things that are created, each stronger than the next. A rock is strong, but iron breaks it. Iron is strong, but fire melts it. Fire is strong, but water extinguishes it. Water is strong, but clouds carry it. Clouds are strong, but wind disperses it. The body is strong, but fear breaks it. Death 
may be mightier than all of that. But the Talmud concludes, quoting Mishle, quoting Proverbs, Tzedakah is even more powerful, for it rescues us from death. An odd phrase. And so Vayikar Rabbah the Midrash asks, what does this mean that it rescues us from death? And concludes that it saves us from a spiritual death. That we spend our lives comparing what we have or don't have to other people. This is true for teenagers, this is true for adults, this is true for children, that we compare our success in life based on another. And while the Parsha initially tells us and tells of us that we are to be God's partners and that's why we help our neighbors, what Midrash is saying is that also, lest we become unappreciative of the blessings that we have in our lives, part of doing the work of Sadaka is that it helps us appreciate our blessings. Or as Mishnah says, Ezehu Ashir Sameach Bechoko, who is ultimately rich? One who's happy with what they have. So then why are we to do tzedakah? Why is a mitzvah project just as essential to becoming about mitzvah as changing from the Torah? Why are we told that the world stands on three pillars, on Torah, Avodah, and Gimilu, Hasadim? And if you're an architect or if you've taken seventh grade geometry, you know that you pull away one of those pillars and the world crumbles. It's because we know that tzedakah is just as essential to sustaining this world as our relationship with God and as the lessons of Torah. And if, taking these words of Mishle, interpreted by Midrash, it's also just as essential for our own personal worlds because it causes us, sometimes we need that reminder, to be appreciative of the blessings that we have in our lives each and every day that we take for granted. So may we walk side by side with God. May we follow the Chukotai, God's statutes and laws, but specifically be God's partner to help those in need, especially when they're too ashamed to ask. And in doing so, may we appreciate our own blessings because we're appreciating the blessings we already have in our lives and we're helping, as God's partner, others to appreciate their blessings as well. Amen.